Many of us today have great difficulty finding out who we are. I know that sounds strange and a little insane, but I think it's true. Many of us today have great trouble getting in touch with ourselves or finding ourselves. We seem to have become the sum total of the reflexes and responses that are necessary to the myriad peers and superiors and authority figures that we have to deal with. And so often we respond to these employers or bosses or fellow students or husbands or wives or children in ways that have become stereotyped and are not really an expression of what we ourselves are. But we have done this so long now that we no longer even know what we would do if we had the freedom to do it. And so we find ourselves, having lived through 1984, but feeling that in a strange way we are living in Orwell's 1984. That is, we are not so much programmed by the big brother of government as by the big brother of all the obligations we have in this life. And so when we come to decide where we want to go for holiday or what we want to do uh, for vocation, we have great trouble uh, deciding. And we usually resort to what are now the crutches of this lame humanity, the uh, aptitude tests or the uh, multiphasic tests that are supposed to show us what we would be good at. Again, we feel that it's just what we would be good at. We don't really have any confidence that it's what we really ourselves should do and want to do. <laughs> In fact, many of us uh, see no hope of doing what we really want to do. And so we gave that up years ago and have become people who have no inside at all, people that are described by T.S. Eliot in The Hollow Men. You remember, we are the hollow men, headpiece stuffed with straw, as if we have no individuality at all inside. And many of us know that and are frustrated by it and yet don't see how to come alive inside again. We try from time to time to do something that is uniquely us, but usually it comes off with an extreme overcorrection that makes a caricature of what we really are. That's what we've been talking about. The problem that many of us have of the inner space inside where our spirit used to be, because that's what your spirit is. It's the real you. It's you as re you really are. It's the unique person that is you. And what we have been saying over this past year on this program is that we, most of us, have become caricatures of what we were meant to be and caricatures of what we really were. Uh, we did not develop uh, in, into the individuals that we were made to be. And we've been sharing, you remember, how it is obvious that the order and design of the universe necessitates uh, the premise of uh, an intelligent personal mind behind it all. And you remember we went through the examination of the historical records of the lives of different people who claimed to be able to tell us what that creator was, and we concluded that the only one that was at all believable was the man, Jesus of Nazareth. And of course he explained to us that his father, the creator, had made us so that we would have a relationship of love and trust in him. That's why he made us. And so he made us unique. He made us individuals. But most of us do not depend, of course, on that kind of invisible being at all. We have begun to depend utterly on the world itself for what we need. And we've tried to get from the world the food, shelter, and clothing that will provide us with the security that we sense we need. And we've tried to get from things, therefore, the sense of material safety that uh, we need and the sense that we can continue to exist in this world. And we've looked to people 
and try to look at the people in the world and get them to provide us with the self-esteem and the self-worth that we need. And then, of course, we've looked at circumstances and we've tried to manipulate them to create the sense of happiness, the sense of peace and exhilaration that we need. And uh, we now find that we have really, in a way, uh, given our souls away a sordid boon. That's the way Wordsworth puts it. You remember in his sonnet, the world is too much with us. Uh, let it, late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our days. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our souls away a sordid boon. And most of us find that. We've either sold our souls to the company store or we have somehow given away the one thing that was vital in us, the one thing that was individual and unique. We have become slaves to the world of people and things and circumstances for the security and the significance and the happiness that we can squeeze out of them. But in the process, we have become a robot. And we sense that, and we don't know how to get out of it. And we don't really know how to come alive inside. And what we are, have been sharing the past few days is that there is only one uh, being that is actually interested in us becoming alive inside and becoming individuals again, and that is the one who made us, the Creator. He's really the only one. Because it was his plan in the first place to make you the only version of you that exists in the whole universe and that will ever exist and that has ever existed. And it's his own interest that you will develop as an individual. He wants you to come to him as an individual, as your own person who will love him freely and will enjoy him and whom he can enjoy. And so he has a great interest in you becoming yourself, you, the, the real you deep down. Because, of course, most of us think that becoming ourselves means just uh, wanting what we want. But in fact, even that has been programmed into us. And becoming ourselves is something different from that. There is a spirit of you that was created by the Creator at the beginning of the world, and that is what you are meant to be. And only he can bring that about. No one else has a vested interest in that. They're all trying to get you to serve them. And uh, they need you as a pliable, submissive, non-willed person. That's uh, what most of the businesses need. We will give you the right to a little initiative, but we don't want you to take too much. And we're certainly not too interested in who you are yourself. But the Creator himself is. Uh, how on earth or how in heaven do you come alive again? Well, the first step that Jesus said you have to take is to believe. Start believing these things. That's the first step. Stop believing that you're part of a mindless evolutionary process. Stop believing that. Believe in evolution if you want, but see that there has to be some mind behind evolution that gives it direction. Otherwise, it would result in the way that all big bangs or all mindless things result in chaos and anarchy. So first of all, believe that there is a creator, that there is someone behind the sky, there's someone beyond the stars that has created all this. And then believe that this man Jesus is his son. And by all means, I mean, you should examine the manuscript evidence. You should begin to look at the Bible, not as an old religious book, not as a book of fairy tales or superstitions, but begin to read particularly the last part of it, the New Testament part. Begin to read Matthew or Mark or Luke or John, or some of those books that give the history of this man Jesus, and just read about his life and examine it and see, is this man insane? Is he imbalanced? Is he a dupe? Or is he a con man? Or is he really the son of the maker of the universe? Examine the evidence for his resurrection from the dead. Read books like uh, Runaway World by Michael Green. Read books uh, like Are the New Testament Documents Reliable by F.F. F. Bruce. Uh, read books like that that d d discuss these things in an, in an intelligent way and begin to believe that this man Jesus really did exist, that he therefore does exist now, because if he can overcome death once, he can overcome it as often as he wants. And then believe what he said, that you are unique, 
that your maker knows you, that he has numbered even the hairs of your head, and he knows you, and he knows every thought that goes through your head, and he has a personal interest in you coming alive and becoming a real person again. First of all, believe those things. The second step is, of course, to change your mind about the way you're living at present, to stop living that way and to start living as if the creator of the world is in existence. So let's talk a little more about that second step tomorrow.